Welcome back to Casual Bias Rugby Week 3 Preview. We've got two familiar faces. We've got Rose. We've got Jake back. Jake, the most hated man on the fan forum. Joe, <laughs> uh, Rose, the most loved person on the fan forum. And then we've got a new face, Jimmy. Proper Irish fan, replacing Tiernan for, for tonight as well. In the guy's 15. So, Jake, watch your language, please. Um, can, we, can, we, can I just say, everyone in the comments should go down and write who their least favourite and who their favourite is. And just write down your comments. Yeah, please do. Yeah, that. it's got a new person to hit on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Jake's hating just tired on, hating of, Jake's on the just child. Tired of it. Well, to be fair, right? Aiden gets a lot of slack. Tiernan gets a lot of slack. Yes. It is what it is, right? Anyway, I do as well. well and you've got clown not bias. As much. Clown bias. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Clown bias. There you go. Anyway, uh, we spoke about the games last week, or well, earlier this week, um, but Rose didn't get an opportunity. Rose, you were at the game between South Africa and England. Tough night out. How are you feeling yeah. after that one? You know what? I'm a very emotional person. I walked into Twickenham and I cried because I was so overwhelmed and I was so excited. I'm not even joking. I teared up. And then at the end, I also cried, but in sadness. Um, <laughs> it was quite depressing. It was my first time ever watching England play. I was so excited and I did really enjoy it. I actually thought objectively the first half was a really entertaining uh, half of rugby and I wasn't too displeased with England but it's just a common pattern now we have the chance to win the game I mean how many penalties did South Africa concede in the second half we had those chances we were in their 22 constantly and we just didn't capitalize we didn't score the points so we're our own worst enemy South Africa didn't play amazingly well um, but they managed to hold us off from respect I guess but to be fair South Africa's defense looked very very good so can I say, Rose, did you take more positives on the England loss against Australia or the England loss versus South Africa? I think I was more pleased after watching the Australia game. Okay. Um, I thought we just played more. I thought our like, ball and hand was more fluid. Like when we, had, when we were in Australia's 22, we looked more dangerous. Whereas, and I think this is a testament to how great South Africa's defence is, but when we were in South Africa's 22, it just, like, we were just not moving. They were like a brick wall. Um, mm. So, yeah, and I just think it's just another loss. It's just... Where do, where do you I reckon mean, England would be, Jake, without without Marcus Smith at the moment? Exactly the same place. George Ford, when he's fit, is just as good as uh, Marcus but Smith. But he's not fit. And I no, love George Ford. But come on. Come on, we know Smith is a form term right it now. Ju it just feels like like Smith is literally carrying that team on his back at the moment. Like, seriously. In terms of the I attack, think... it just feels like there's, there's nothing in attack unless Marcus Smith touches that ball. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely the creative mind of the team. I mean, I think it's slightly an unfair comment to say he's like the only successful element of our attack. We had some backs who played really well. The other day, especially, I, mean, I thought Freddie Stewart looked really good in this first game back, and I know that doesn't really relate as much to our attack, but just who in scored, terms of the back line. Who scored both our tries against South Africa? Uh, Underhill and right um Oh yes, right um, home. I say one yeah. of the. I think the forwards did a lot of you know. No, know listen, look, I, I think if there's something that you guys can take away is that you're forwards have kind of stepped up in my opinion i don't think you've been blitzed in in contact or when it comes to scrum time at all right and that's where we kind of thought that the weak point might be against australia we thought it's going to be a weak point against all blacks we thought it's going to be a weak point against south africa and you actually got a couple of scrum penalties against south africa as well i thought you guys did very well in terms of retaining your ball against south africa so there is a lot of positive takeaways um and in the end it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to say that England played more of the rugby than South Africa. Like it looks more like we grinded out the victory and we struggled to get really into gear. But obviously, we'll we'll take the ugly win over a pretty loss any day of the week. Unfortunately for you, you just deal with pretty losses. So you know, it <laughs> you is just really deal with losses. I would yeah. say that this was a pretty loss. Against anyway, South let's let's quickly move over to to Jimmy. Obviously, making his debut on the channel. Jimmy, yeah. welcome. You're coming off a, you. a victory. Up and down victory against Argentina. Tiernan, he had a mouthful. People didn't agree with him. He, they, they said it was being too harsh. 
I agree. He was very hard, I think. I yeah. Think. Okay. So, so what's your what's your opinion on what's your takeaways from from Ireland versus Argentina? First half, very good from Ireland. Second half, Argentina come out a totally different team. We've seen like they really played to their full potential. I think in that second half, they played like a top four nation. They really like were just quality all around. Like we were attacking for like just constant attack at one point, and we just couldn't get through. It, like it wasn't necessarily that Ireland were bad. It was just because of how good Argentina were, and I think we we were lucky in the end. I think to get the win, but I think that first half performance like really just got us over the line in the end. But yeah, I don't think it's any worrying. But yeah, it wasn't what, a bad performance. Did, but did just, you did you see the knock on at the end of the game? I was up that end in the state. I was actually at the match, so uh, it was oh. tough tough to see at the time, but um. I was just happy we got the win. I, I was in the, I was he, he's fine he's fine with the robbery right there at the end. Um No, I, I was in the you know the end that they were attacking towards and like it, all I just saw was just the ref blows whistle. Mm, yeah, that's it well, really. You, it just... you, you'll take the victory, of course. Of course yeah. you'll take the victory. Um anyway, speaking about Argentina, Jake, we're coming straight to you. Now we're moving into the preview. They're taking on well, the team that you support. You support the French, you back them all the way. <laughs> um, Argentina, the the inconsistency, no wait, the consistent in, inconsistent, right? Coming off a victory, then a loss, which probably means they need to come off another victory now, right? Going up against the French, coming off good performances. Do you think they have a chance going uh, going to going to to Paris? Yes, and winning the game? yes, yes, they definitely have a chance. Um, my airpods have just died. <laughs> it's fine. We can still hear you properly. No, we can't. Yeah, it's cut back. Okay. I'm um, sorry. Yeah, yeah, they definitely have a chance. You know, um, uh, basically, it's the French team that lined up last weekend um, against New Zealand, and then the way Argentina played against. Um, well, first of all, it's a great game against Italy, had it been just in the rugby championship, but then also against Ireland, they played very well. And, you know, they were down a man for that when they lost 12 points over to Ireland as well, which you have to remember. So, um, yeah, they're playing very well and they've definitely got a chance. And uh, if the French team brought the same sort of similar players, a lot of them stepped up, but they're quite inexperienced. You know, like Buros, Budahon, um, yeah, he's took some of those ones, so the props. But I'm still going back with my, my team. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think France are the English win. backing the French. Can you believe it? Because I know how much quality they got, and especially at the Stade de France, it's a really tough stadium right now to go and win at. So I think France will win. But again, I think it could be quite close. Maybe not as close. I think maybe like ten points in it. Yeah. Do Do you think it's just purely France's muscle gets it over the line? Oh, I think it's. Their backs, they can score out of nothing, as we saw BLB mm. array. And just for oh. example, England, uh, France, back in the Six Nations, two, I think two tries came from their own 22, where they're just absolutely crazy tries. And that's what they've got. And I know Argentina scored a few of them recently as well. So it could be a very entertaining game. Both their backs, mm. are, uh, sorry, their forwards, are very sort of clever forwards. And so it's going to be a really interesting matchup. Um, I'm, I can't wait to watch it. But I just think. France have got a bit more quality and depth across the pitch, so I'm going France at home to win. Yeah, fair enough. I, I, I'm inclined to agree with you. I, I think the the perfect matchup is if France is probably the ideal team for Argentina to really struggle against with the way that they play, um, just the physical up and and everything. I just think it's a bad matchup for for Argentina. We we even saw it right with the play style of of the French. They they see team kind of went to Argentina and they beat Argentina, right? Um, now, was it a full strength Argentinian team in Argentina? I'm not even sure. It, right? it was A, it was A B, A B, A B. Yeah, I just think at home they've got that home ground advantage. They've got the 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 strength upper and the physical upper end, and I think that is a massive advantage in any any game really. If you got the the powerful forwards that can carry, and I think the quality on the bench of the French as well, it's just a bit better. Um, Rose, going into into this game, uh, what what's your thoughts on it? Do you do you believe that France are kind of like it's certain that they will get the victory, or do you actually believe Argentina might sneak an upset victory over here? No, I think France will win, but I don't think it's a certainty. I agree with a lot of what Jake said, 
And just building on like the home advantage point. At France, it's crazy. Their fans are like very, very hostile. And I love it. It's great to see. It's very dramatic. Mm. But of all the stadiums in the world you want to go and play at, like France, like any of the stadiums in France, because of how their fr fans respond, it's not ideal for that away team. Um, but obviously, like you guys said, Argentina have been stepping up and playing pretty well. Probably should have got the win against Ireland. I think they were quite unlucky not to win. Um, mm. So I think it could go either way. I think it will be a brilliant game. I didn't watch loads of the France game last week, actually, but I did manage to catch a bit of the second half um, after coming mm. back from Twickenham. And I saw the Ramos. Um, like little kick through with Bill 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 yeah, yeah, he was amazing. So if they can, is there any like, wingers quicker than him, he's so fast. He's not 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 international level right now. I don't think they are. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I th I think it will actually be. It's one of my games of the weekend for this weekend. I think it will be very very entertaining. But I think France will just sneak over. I mean, if yeah. they can do it against the All Blacks, they can do it against Argentina. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Um, you know, I'm not the biggest fan necessarily of France because of what they're doing with the with the Southern Hemisphere tour or anything. But you know what I really admire is it looks like a game there is just pure vibes. Like I would love to go and watch a game in France. You see the light show and everything. Like it just feels like they're taking it to a new level, right? Because I, I remember seeing them them come out against Japan with the light show, the music pumping, the haka with the lights. It's just insane. It just looks like a pure, pure vibe. Um, yeah. Oh, I, mean, I, think, I think like Rose that. enjoyed a light show at Twickenham, no? Yeah, I did. It was great. It was really cool. There were like, there were fireworks as well. Yeah, so, so, yeah, the yeah, English are also stepping it up. It was, it was yeah. really cool. It was like a whole laser show. But, so sorry we don't fly planes over our stadiums. They're not quite that cool, <laughs> but um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We take stuff to an even better level. That plane costs more more money than all the all lights. Okay, so <laughs> you need to pay the pilot as well, and you need some class to fly over that low. Anyway, let's go over into into predictions for for this game, Jimmy. Um, I didn't even ask you about the game, but talk to us your prediction, reasoning why. Let's get into it. I think this is going to be a real interesting one. Part of me thinks that Argentina could make it really tight, but. I think these first two games have pretty much gave it all. Like that big win over Italy and the uh, push Ireland really close. I just don't think, I think they've just given everything they have in these first two games. And I don't think we'll have anything left really to push France. And I think it'll be a comfortable mm. win for France. Good point. Yeah. Jimmy, really that's a very point. good point. Yeah. Could they be running a bit low on steam or could they be like, okay, this is the final game of the year, final push. See if we can actually do it. Because Argentina loves a big upset. They yeah. enjoy that. They they thrive off of going to, to places and, and winning the game in their country as well. So I'm going with Argentina uh, with, with France to sneak over the line. Five points. But I do think it's a good matchup for France. But Argentina can make it scruffy. They can score a try from nowhere. You said France can do it. Argentina can do the exact same. A couple of counter-attack tries, put the pressure on on France. And we saw Look at how the All Blacks played. You can put France under some pressure and they can make life very, very tough. Um, I'm, go I'm going with France. Five points. Very close game. Jake? Yeah, I'm in agreement. I'm going to have to go Sorry. France about 10 to 12 points. Is it going to be close or just a cruising 12-point victory? <clears throat> I thought like they'll pull away in the second half. Um I think Argentina are consistent enough to make it close. But again, I just think the French have got just a little bit extra right now. And if Argentina are a couple of years behind, need a bit more depth. Mm, fair enough. Rose, you going? Yeah, I think Argentina, uh, I think France by maybe even a little bit less than you. I said mm. I agree, but I think it will be tight. I'm, I was going to say France by three or four, maybe. Yeah, okay. I, I'd, I'd, love, I'd love Argentina to win, by the way. I, I hope I win, but I just predict France to win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, th there's no one really that hates Argentina, right? They, they like kind of, if I have no, to... Oh, 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 oh. There, there is a history with England and Argentina. Though. I don't mind, but there is a, there's a I'm, rivalry. You have history with everyone. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't count. That doesn't count at all. 
Oh, it definitely counts. England and Argentina are rivals. <laughs> who, who are you not rivals with? Japan. With Eddie Jones there. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> It, let's let us let us let's let's move on. Let's actually talk about no. Should we? No, not yet. That's an interesting one. I, I just want to run quickly through through this one. Um, Ireland versus Fiji. I know people of have, be, have been pulling it out of proportion with like, oh, Fiji might have a chance against Ireland. I think Fiji gets put in a spliff. They get smoked. I'm getting Ireland by at least 28 points on this one. I think it's a Ooh. statement victory inbound. Yeah, I think it's a statement victory inbound. Um, literally, Fiji stumbled over the line against Wales. This is a bad, bad Wales team. Ireland, they will be hungry. Ireland could have put Argentina to the sword in the first half. If Ty Byrne didn't knock that ball over the line, that's 26 points to nine in the first half. And I think people are, are missing that, and that completely stunned their, their progress or their momentum in the game. I'm going with with Ireland to absolutely ragdoll Fiji at the moment, and I do love Fiji, but it's it is what it is. I think this Ireland team will be scary this weekend. Jimmy, I don't. I just, sorry, Jimmy, go. No, Rose, no. go, Rose, go, go, go. I really, I think that's quite insulting to the Fijian rugby team. Twenty eight points. Yeah. I mean, I know Wales are not great at the moment, but they held on for quite a while against Australia before they pulled away last week. I don't think it's fair to judge Fiji on one game against Wales that they still won. And I don't think Ireland look... Listen, in terms of like every other team in world rugby, obviously they're up there. In terms of how we know Ireland to play, it's below par. I don't think it's going to be like a 28-point victory. I think it will definitely be a victory... But maybe by between tw 10 and 20 points, like 15 ish, 28 is crazy. And I think the Fijians will kind of recognize that Ireland have been a bit under form at the moment and will be thinking, mm, maybe we can do something here. I think they'll be really up for it. So I think Ireland will win, but not by as much this as we is, uh, This is a Fiji team without Samir Adradra as well. This is a Fiji team that lost by, uh, against the second team of Scotland by quite a mile as well. It wasn't. Um, it wasn't fully the second team of Scotland. No, yes. probably not fully the second team. But Ireland's still better than Scotland, and Scotland hammered them. That, that's my point. I just, I, I just have a feeling. I don't think they're going to get smacked around by twenty-eight points. The thing is, I, I believe the Irish system is that good, right? Obviously, they're making individual errors, right? But the system is still outstanding, and if they can keep to that system, I just don't see where Fiji really holds any threats in this game. Like they like a loose game, the Irish keep it tight. They're not going to play your loose game. And that's going to be the advantage. And then that's how they get the massive victory. But that's just my opinion, obviously. Um, Jimmy, talk about your team. Well, Are you confident well, going into this one? Or do you actually believe what some of the social media outlets are posting, where it's like Fiji can actually do it? They, they've beaten England, they've beaten Wales, and now they're coming for, for Ireland. I think, like you see outlets like Rugby Pass and all that, last couple of weeks since that New Zealand loss, they've just been waiting months and months for Ireland to lose a game and they've just turned into all like Ireland haters and like coming out with these crazy statements like that. No, I like Fiji, no disrespect to them, but I think we're going to win by at least 21 points. Put out some of the younger lads like Sam Prendergast, Thomas Clarkson, maybe give Jacob Stockdale a game, let him score a couple of tries, get the confidence up. Yeah, no offense, Fiji, but I think it'll be a comfortable win for Ireland. Yeah, how um, many points are you going with? Uh, 21. 21, yep. Yeah. Fair? Fair enough. Jake? Yeah, and, um, if Ireland put out their first team, their main sort of, you know, 23, 26 players, then I'll go over 20 points as well, probably at least, yeah, at least 15, probably over 20. Like, yeah, Fiji are good, but they haven't got all their best players out. That like I see Red Raj has been out and they haven't had that um Ravatamunda and uh, Bottia. So they're missing some players, but um no, they've they beat Wales, but it's still not a a top four sort of quality side. I'd go twenty plus if Ireland out their main team. Am I the only one who thinks that they're not gonna get completely smacked around? I think Ireland will win pretty convincingly, but I don't think it will be as crazy as you guys are saying. I think it'll be slightly closer. 
But yeah, I'd no. Be surprised if they can hold on to everything, and yeah, I don't know. Yeah, valid. Okay, let's move on to let's let's go to South Africa versus Wales. <laughs> Are we going over forty points difference? Over fifty <laughs> points difference? Over sixty points Wales. difference? To well, Wales, you, you've, you now, you? you've announced your team already, haven't you? Yeah, well, obviously, breaking news to anyone that hasn't seen um, Auction Chairs out um, of I our team. But I'm so <laughs> sorry, I don't think it's going to damage you that badly. I it's not going to damage us at all. So you, if you play Chess and Colby at prop, you probably still win by 30. So, <laughs> yeah, listen. Uh, the the thing the thing is I, I truly love this team. I'm I'm a massive advocate for not doing heavy rotational stuff, but also rotating a bit, where it's like you keep the spine of your team the same, but also bringing in a couple of um other players that are that are young younger and hungry. So I don't like this thing where we, for instance, take out all of our Lucy's, right? And then you have Marco van Staren and, and Alrich Lowe, and then for instance Cameron Anakum. That never will play together. But the fact of the matter is we've got a couple of changes and it's in combination still. So you see, for instance, Jordan Hendricks has come in, but he's still got the proper first team outside centers outside of him. Guys that he would be playing with. And I absolutely love that. You've got young and hungry guys coming in. Cameron Anakum, massive name, about to make his debut. Is he on I the just bench? He is on the bench instead of Quagha Smith. Quagha Smith and Peter Steph Tutoy has gone back home before they go to Japan. Um, so they'll probably just have some family time. And I saw the the Welsh lineup. It's it's going to be a long day at the office, right? Because <laughs> the principality they will be hoping for rain, but the principality has a roof, right? So it's going to be a dry game. So I'm going box by at least forty eight points. I think well, we hammered it. Forty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say um, box by like. 30 maybe 48. Remember, we played a second we played a second team against Wales at Twickenham and nearly put 50 on them. Yeah, and you nearly lost the first half. It was a tight first half, to be fair. Yeah. We, we, okay, well, we literally played not even a second like a D team. I I watched that game with you. You were screaming because I was angry, yeah. Off. I was angry. <laughs> um no, yeah, I think box by 30. I think it will be convincing. I think 48 is quite extortionate, but they are at the Principality, which is different to Twickenham. Obviously, it's a bit of a fortress there. Not in the same way as Twickenham, although that's quite biased. Um, but it's a it's a stadium full of buzzing Welsh atmosphere. Well, they lost um, by 40 against Australia. Yeah, I actually think they'll lose by less against Springboks. And that's not me saying that um, Australia are a better team. I just think the way the game will play out, like the way Australia's attack is looking at the moment, like they're just such an offensive team. Like that offense is just amazing. And uh, Wales couldn't like battle that when they played them. So I still think the box will win pretty convincingly, like by a lot. I think 48 is kind of insane. But yeah, where did Jimmy go? I've just been looking at this uh, Welsh lineup, and they're going to get smacked. <laughs> yeah, I haven't <laughs> seen that. Absolutely smacked. Yeah, um, Costello is what, back in. <laughs> what's what's their back row? Uh, they got both them, um, Jack Morgan and Plumtree, and they so no Wainwright, bench. no Tommy Wayne Raffel. Be out yeah. and Raffel's on the bench again. I don't know what Gatlin's is thinking. He wants he wants to get sacked at this point. He wants that payout. <laughs> Gatlin's waving the white flag. It's like the Eric Ten Hag that was like all the signings that he's made, none of them picked for the game. And he was like Aaron Maguire and see... Johnny Evans. You go into my into my centre backs. Johnny did you Adam's not see the baller. interview he did? Sorry? Did you not see the interview he did? Yeah, well, well like, so I'll I'll read it to you what, what, what he said, right? So he's come out. This is this was posted by Ball Carrier. This is where I saw it. And he's and he said, if it's to make a change to get some positivity in the game, I'd support that hundred percent. If that means me leaving, I'm comfortable with that as well. And if you make statements like that, you probably know the time is coming, right? And yeah. this time Wales, they just gotta push through. I know they brought him back because it was looking like a shit show. 
They brought him back. It looked a bit better in the World Cup, and now it's just a shit show again. It's time for change, and they have to just pursue with this change. Like, just go with the with the dark times. It can't I, get worse than it already is, right? I do want to just point out, though, they are probably missing 20 first-team players. Like, they are missing a lot of people, and they're still losing to South Africa, but they are weakened quite a lot right now. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it isn't a great state at the moment. But if you look at it, right, Dave Dave Rennie, when he was with Australia, they sacked him. There was no mercy. The guy was missing literally like two two teams through through injury, right? And they still sacked him. Imagine if they bring back Dave Rennie to the Wales team, and now he gets <laughs> finally gets all of his players, and then he cooks with Wales. The redemption of they're, they're just missing. I feel like they're missing a bit of size, especially in, in the backs. They're not big enough. Um, guys really like to compete up with you know your some of these South Africans and your, your New Zealanders and French I don't, I, I don't think not that the French are the biggest backs but still yeah some of these wings Murray, Dyer, Rogers they're all very small wings they're not even like powerful like um, sort of your Colby like, they're dead slight guys if you know what I mean yeah <clears throat> Jimmy what's your what's your thoughts on Wales South Africa me you're going think- I, they they get yeah. over thirty put on. <laughs> Wales I shot win. No, um, I think they'll pull up a respectable first half performance. Maybe keep it within a score, like a couple of points. Maybe go ahead at one point, but yeah, it'll be very. It's it'll be comfortable in the end to the box, but yeah. it'll be even, it'll probably have some positives to take away from it. Maybe even the the players that have been the guys that have been performing is not even there this weekend. Like Cam Winnett. I know his ankles got got left wherever it was from by Len Ikitao, right? Len, by the way, Len Ikitao, how good has this guy been? It's like, very good. He, he won the game with the with the chicken wing, and then he goes goes there and and leaves Cam with it for dead, right? Um, yeah. Okay. So we none of us really giving um, any chances to to Wales with that. I mean, got, I, got, I do feel sorry for for Wales. Like you got DLN there at twelve, yeah. Yeah, and yes, with Isa, one of those two are going to absolutely run over Costello all game at ten. He's going to get, he's going to suffer. He's going to, he's, he's not very good. No, he's very he's, he's, like... What's that? Sorry, Veli Larue. No, we can't understand why Fassi has been yeah. picked over Jimmy, are you done leaving now? Yeah, sorry, just the dogs going mad there. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, next time, just mute. Sorry. Okay. Anyway, let's go on. Italy versus the All Blacks. I I think this is one of the most interesting games because yeah, agreed. If, if Italy play at the absolute best and New Zealand put out sort of an A B team and have a stink up, it could be close. I honestly believe that could be close. They're playing at the Juventus Stadium, so it should be like a an awesome atmosphere. I don't think they've ever played there. Definitely, it's quite a new stadium. So for me, it could be you know it's going to be packed out with the All Blacks. It's going to be. A, an incredible atmosphere and if the italians actually like turn up in a big game for once against the southern hemisphere team and ride their energy i don't see why it can't be within why they can't get it within two scores maybe yeah sort of 15 points yeah i agree yeah i think i've kind of underestimated the all blacks a lot over this series i thought england would beat them which is obviously biased but i thought ireland would beat them by a lot they did lose to France, obviously, but it was a very close game. I think they definitely have this one in the bag by yeah, a couple of scores, maybe a bit over 15 points. Just because Italy didn't perform that well last weekend against Georgia. We kind of always, I feel like, have this like idolised version of Italy where we're like, they are improving and then they kind of drop down a bit again. So I think that's a little bit of a myth. I think they could play well. They're at home, but I think... New Zealand in the end, it. right? In, in the end, Italy could be good, right? They struggled against Georgia, right? They got smacked by Argentina. And the previous time these two p- teams met, the All Blacks put 90 points on them. That is crazy right. in a World Cup. You're, you're, you're both 100% right. I was just saying, if they turn up, 
they could be close. I could also be 40 points on them. But <laughs> I, I get it. I'm, that was not my official prediction. I'm just saying if, if they turn up and play like they did in some of the Six Nations games at the Avengers Stadium, yeah. you'll be yeah, to I agree. the biggest team. It could be quite close, but it could also be yeah. a crash. I, I, do, I do agree with you. And I, I do believe that Italy will be hungry and they'll, they'll try and make a point of this game that the, the World Cup was a blip. Uh, that's not the same team, right, as we saw in the Six Nations where we see, saw Menoncello really push through and Brex coming through. And who's that? Is it Ioani on the wing, right? Yeah. Like we saw we saw a lot of the, the Italian players come through this this Six Nations, in in my opinion. So it, well, it does, they do have a different feel around them. And it's like, how much do you want to bring down the Italian team? But then also you want to big up the, the Georgian team because Georgia were good. Georgia were really good. So I'm going with the All Blacks to get the victory. Depends what team they're going to put out. If they're going second string team, I'm going with All Blacks like 15 points victory. But if they're going full strength team, I think Italy maybe stays in the game. Kind of the same way that when, when Italy played against South Africa a few years back, where I think they were leading, leading in the first half and then just got gassed out with the quality coming off the bench or something like that. Well, I'll give the All Blacks maybe like a 20 to 25 point victory, just like stampeding them. Uh, when it comes to like that final 35, 30 minutes of the game. That's how I see it playing out. Uh, Jake, what's your official prediction? No, I so think you're completely right. And um, I mean, just to that, the World Cup game, of course, Menoncello, who won Six Nations Player of the Tournament, was actually injured that World Cup. And they've had a coach change since, who's Casada's has come mm. in and made them way more solid and less stupid. Yeah, it's, it's a different feel, right? It, <clears throat> it feels, feels a bit different. Yeah, and even last year when they were slightly worse, it shouldn't have been ninety points. That was such a disappointing like performance. <laughs> so, um, how, how do you reckon a team feels right when people say like, possibly an upset victory? Could New Zealand get knocked out in the group stages? Just whack forty uh, ninety four points on them or whatever it was. That's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> I think I really hope it's the, the first thing I'm saying and they do well. But I feel like New Zealand. And Razor doesn't change his team that much. And um, I think it's been more likely that they get about 25, 30 points put on them than the sort of lower score. I hope it's the lower score. But officially, I, I sadly, I think it'll be close to 25 points New Zealand win. Yeah. Jimmy? I think if Italy play well, I think they could probably keep it within 10 to 7 points coming into the last 15 or so minutes. But with the quality of the All Blacks, I'd say it could be about... 15 to 20 points full time. That is if it leave a good game. But really don't know the it could be a repeat of the World Cup and I don't think it'll be 90, 90 points, but could put a good score in them or it could be I think I'm probably leaning more towards it being respectable for Italy and I'd say all black by about twenty. Yeah. On your bingo card, you reckon we see pigeons on the field? <laughs> yeah. Well, it just doesn't feel like an Italian game without some pigeons on the field. Rose, official prediction? The All Blacks by about 25. Yeah, about 25. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is an exciting one. This is a a close game, this one. We've got El Sakiko, England versus Japan. I know there's a game before that, but I want to talk about this one first because the, did you just call it a close one. one? Yeah, it's going to be a close one. Mm-hmm. Both teams haven't won in a long time. Eddie Jones, you'll be hungry playing against his ex team. He's got a he point. He was hungry. Now. He was hungry at the start of the summer. And how did that? No, that, that that doesn't count. That was a friendly. He knew it was a friendly. This is also friendly. No, this doesn't count as a friendly. This is autumn nation series. It's basically a friendly. We are going to smash them. First victory at the Alien Stadium. First victory at the Allianz Stadium. I'm kidding. I don't think we'll smash them, but I'll think we'll, I think we'll win. I pray that we win because I think I'll lose my sanity if we don't. It's just like an added little extra that Eddie Jones is coaching them. Like, we have to win that game. I, like, I don't even know. I don't even know with England anymore. I find it so difficult to make predictions. Every week, I think I have hope. But, like, weirdly, Japan is the team I have the least hope against. I have a lot of respect for the Japanese rugby <laughs> team. And... What? You have the least hope against Japan? Yeah, no, genuinely. I'm being so serious because I'm not being funny. I was, like, delusional for the other games. This is just me, like, my 
subjective opinion. But I had hope against the other teams, and now I'm just like, I love England. I love them so much. But it just feels, like, so unrealistic at the moment because I haven't felt it in so long. And, like, Japan, when we played them in the summer, actually played very, very good rugby. They just kept dropping the ball. If they can catch the ball, we're fucked. I'm not even joking. I'm scared. Jimmy, Jimmy, you know what this screams of? They've all had all these tough games, and now they get Japan, and it's like, okay, finally a game that we should be winning. And then they just write off Japan, Eddie Jones masterclass. I don't think that will happen. Just get schooled. Eddie Jones always has, has something up his sleeve, right? No, he hasn't he won a game in a very long time, right? There's no consistency. <laughs> but if there's ever a guy that you don't want to have some beef with, beef with when you go up against them, that does like a bit of an upset, it's Eddie Jones. I'd rather Jimmy, have beef with Eddie Jones. Wait, wait, no. It's who, it's who casual? It's who? I just wanted your voice to go any higher pitch there. So I know. Like, Eddie Jones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy, are you giving Eddie Jones and Japan the chance? Do you think they have? Do you think they have it in them to pull off the upset victory? Is it well, really an upset victory? Well, Eddie yeah. Jones sometimes says that he has something up his sleeve, and he doesn't. He said that against the All Blacks that it'll be the best ever Japanese <laughs> performance. But um, no one, Eddie game? Jones, I would not be surprised if they do. Sorry, repeat that final sentence. That. Sorry, it's just my AirPods going in now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, knowing Eddie Jones, I wouldn't be surprised if he does put up a masterclass. I'm not a fan of him at all, like especially with his comments he said about Ireland over the years. But yeah, it would just be such an Eddie Jones thing to do to beat his old team. <laughs> He'll be angry for it. He'll be angry for it. Jake, Jake, do I... you have? Are you a bit scared? No. I want to just say... Don't like, lie. I, 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 heard, I, I, I hope for an Eddie Jones victory just to see Jake's post-match video. <laughs> Once again. <laughs> Three in a row. Three angry post-match videos. Say, I've heard that... Um, well, I've not really watched the, the Japan-New Zealand game, Japan-France. I heard they've been playing quite well for patches and that Eddie Jones is, is building something half-decent. So it'll be interesting to watch them properly this, this weekend. But... Um, no, if, if 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 England lose this, Steve Borthwick cannot stay in the job. Like he has to go. <laughs> it's, it's time to go. Yeah, but Jake, Jake, he won't. He won't. Exactly. Well, like, uh, that's that's your problem, no, right? No, no, no. I, I, I I agree that like if we lose against Japan, like it's an obvious thing to do, but I really doubt it will happen. Well, like, I, I don't know, but I I think we'll win. I think we should win by like twenty points. Um, I want to see a few different players come in a bit of rotation um i won't go in depth from like who but just at least sort of 10 sort of new faces maybe 12 13 in the whole squad and yeah seeing just given the other guys have run out because it's been the team's been quite consistent throughout the, the alternation so far but we should still regardless of the team win by about 20 points i would hope i want to see the finn smith is, get a bit of a look in oh the thing, the thing is smith. right i just i just don't rate steve Borthwick as a coach Rose, I've I've been saying this to you for the longest time before the Six Nations, before the World Cup. I, I do not rate this guy as a coach. This is not surprising to me that um, England are struggling. It just looks like he has no ideas, right? Then he gets in new coaches. They look better. He falls out with that coach, and that coach is all of a sudden the devil, and he sends him to be a, a remote worker. And then the team doesn't talk to him. And look at what happens. You fall to shit again, right? Now you're playing up against Eddie Jones. You'll be happy to play against England. Obviously, you guys spanked them at their home. But since then, he's been building. He's not really got the results. But he got more run meters. Looked a lot better when he played against France. Right? They looked very good against All Blacks. Now, could you say the All Blacks were bad? Probably. But this is still the same same team that nearly beat France. Still the same team that did beat Ireland. Still the same team that did beat, beat England. And Japan looked pretty good in, in, in large patches of that game. Now, you give yeah. them a bit of hunger going up against England. I'm not writing them off at all. No, I'm going with England to, still get, England to still get the victory by 12 points. But Japan <sighs> will look very good. And your your asshole will do this during that game, Jake. I'm, I'm not even <laughs> lying. Don't be live because you'll get suspended. You'll get Stop angry. doing this. <laughs> yeah, I'll be live and I'll down a drink every time we score a try. And if we score lots of tries, I'll get very drunk. <laughs> You'll end up being sober. Jake, I'm going to do it where I drink 
every time we can see the try. So by the end, I'll be too pissed to cry when no, we lose. No, don't don't be so negative about England, Rose. I've had enough <laughs> of your negativity. <laughs> well, you predicted England to lose last week. Stop it! Because, no, he's taking. He's joking because I said that to him last week. I think England will win by about fifteen points. I'm just saying. I feel quite defeated. It hit you guys last week. It's hit me this week. And I'm just like, I, the thought of winning, it's so like foreign to me. I feel like it's not achievable. I don't know. It's just been so long. <laughs> our, last oh, entry, I, I think, our last I think... entry was Japan. So it would be nice if that was <laughs> oh, round oh, moment. Jesus Christ. <laughs> that, that is terrible. Oh. When will it end, Casual? When will it end? <laughs> I, I pray for days like these. These days <laughs> like these put a smile on my face. Sing Be English quiet. Language. Be quiet. Don't just make this perfect. Like, if England loses, like, I'm going to predict Japan to win by three points. Uh, to come to Dublin in February, Ireland go and put 30 points in them, making up for what happened last time. So, listen, that'll just be perfect. No, but listen, I'm not joking. With the, with the form that England's in, I enjoy it because that means that not the game between not all games that have Wales involved will be a dead rubber. They will have one game where they feel they, they can fancy their chances. So, That's not funny. Yeah. That'd be quite offensive. Oh well, England struggling, Wales Again, struggling. What, those, that, that, those usually end up as as being. It's not. Great it's not the same calibre. Okay, it's you. It's not comparative at all. It's different levels of struggling. Don't be silly. We lost to really the Wallabies in the last five, like in the last minute, with by what five points? How many points did Wales lose to Australia by? Don't even compare the two sides, please. Thank you. Can we move on to the final game? <laughs> yeah, this is an exciting one. It this is, is an exciting one. I have. A I'll, lot I'll be glued to my TV. <clears throat> Scotland versus the Wallabies. Jake, I'll come straight to you. Chat about Please do. Please do. This is this is the one I'm most excited about, honestly. It was France, Argentina, but um I think this is the closest matchup of the weekend so far. Um also Rugby Realm on TikTok, Dan, has is really ludicrously said England are seventh best in the world, Scotland are fifth. And I am not having that. We are not worse than Scotland. So I will be rooting everything this weekend for Australia to absolutely pump the Scottish in Murrayfield. I hope Scott, you know Australia bring out all their nice moves, all their best players are starting. And um, yeah, I'm I'm back in Australian win. Come on the South. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Listen, I will always back. I'm backing Australia against everyone except the Springboks. Just because I've been calling it for such a long time. Tom Wright, he's that guy. He's just that guy. Len Ikitao, he's been sensational. Joseph Suali'i, wow. What a talent. Well, it's, it's quite fun that the two of the best um, Scottish players are um, obviously Dempsey and, and Tupelotu, who are Australian, but we'll forget about that. Do, do we reckon they get into this Australian team? But, uh, yeah, they would if they were playing for Australia. Yeah, definitely. On current form? Well, Tui Pilati has to be. I, I reckon Tui Pilati is the second best centre in the world at the moment. Yeah. But um, no, it's, it's, it's just such an exciting game. Like They're both quite good attacking the backs. They've got exciting back line players. So that's going to be a really interesting matchup. Mm. And then like, a decent forward pack. Not necessarily the biggest, but quite dynamic. So, yeah, I, th I think... You know, it, it feels like two team. of the exact same teams, right? Like their strong mm -hmm. points are at the, at the same point, where it's like... They Lucy's yeah. and they they Lucy's their centers, their wings are pretty pretty good, um, and I think their props are also pretty good. So it's like their strengths are all in the same same spot. I mean, the, the benefit for uh, Scotland is going to be Finn Russell. Like, he is generally a world class player, in my opinion, and you know he's got to show up and have a big game here because he he can have a difference if he plays to his best. But um, yes, yeah, it's, it's really interesting. I don't know what. You Jimmy yeah, that, that, that's fair. Like, I'm not, I'm not the biggest Finn Russell fan necessarily, but I do believe the way that Australia defend at the moment, that could suit Finn Russell really, really nicely. If Australia is not structured and they, and they leave the gaps like they did against England or even against Wales, or they have those blips where they give 
the other give Scotland 20 minutes of front foot ball. <sighs> Scotland's very clinical. That is dangerous. That is very, very dangerous. Um, Jimmy, what 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 are you thinking about this one? Who are you backing? This is going to be tight. I'm going to back the Aussies, but as you said, like they've like had some crazy scores put up against them. I know they've come out on top uh, so far, but um, yeah, I do back the Aussies to get the job done. They've been playing some amazing rugby at the minute. Scotland, outside that Springboks game, you can't really get a proper... Yeah, they haven't really had a proper test. I had Portugal last week and Fiji before. So, like... I think the Scottish main team has only had one like full run out so far, and these these Australians like they've seen to they're starting to build on something like looking really positive at the minute, and I think it'll be Australia by five, but it e- easily could go either way. Yeah, Rose, do you send, uh, do you share the same sentiments? Yeah, I do. I'm really excited about Australian rugby right now. I love Australia being good at rugby because it's so nice to watch just as a rugby fan. Like, as a neutral, it's very, very enjoyable rugby. I think Scotland play similarly, but I think there's just more flair within the Australian rugby team. And if they play like they've played over the past two weeks, it will be a brilliant game because Scotland, despite losing to the Springboks, I actually think they played very well in that game. And I know that this is a classic phrase that English people use a lot. They probably should have won, even though they didn't. Um, I know the final, like the very final part of the game, the Springboks kind of came into their own and their bench kind of sorted them out. But like Scotland, I don't think had a terrible game that game. And I think it will be close. And obviously, Murrayfield is a hard place to go to and win. England know that. Um, Oh, I don't know what I've just done. New Zealand know that as well. (laughs) Yeah, no, so many teams know it. I mean, look how much they beat Fiji by a couple of weeks ago. But I do think the Wallabies will win, like, by literally three points. I think it's, I think it's Scotland are going to make it difficult for them. Well, I think it'll be a great Scotland's game. a very good team at the moment. And obviously, they're building depth as well. I mean, look at what they did to Portugal literally last weekend. That was their second team. And they, they put out a very, very solid performance. I want to know, like, from the north, What's what's the what's the like viewing of of Scotland? Do you see them as like this one team that's like up in the north and everyone just likes them? There's no one really that hates the Scots. Almost no, what? not really. You don't have you don't have this thing. Okay, uh, you you We're do not up here. the northern rivalries. Jimmy will tell you that Ireland and Scotland also don't like each other much in rugby. Well, like, Ireland don't like anyone in the I'm friends with the Scots, but most of the time I like them. But when it comes to like like as we seen in the World Cup, it was like WWE at one point between Schumann and and uh, Sheehan <laughs> at one point, <laughs> like going oh, yeah, each other over the barrier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, on the day it's yeah, like, it does get heated. Sorry for the stupid questions. They always say there's nothing like a stupid question until I asked that. I realized that was very fucking stupid. Yeah, <laughs> but I do like them on like when like if like they're playing like France or England or or Wales like uh, and it's like the Six Nations, I would back them. Like and I probably prefer them to win over there and I do like to see them do well but when it comes to them playing Ireland none of that really but no, of yeah. course not of course not Jimmy I think I'm just, I think, I'm just um, asking like if everyone had a second team would that probably be Scotland in the north Italy yeah I mean, it might actually be Scotland or or, or Italy uh, not mm. Scotland not for, I think no, the England no. fans definitely not Scotland there's a big rivalry there and also of course. there's like our bogey team, we can't beat them. It, yeah. You can never be supportive enough. of the team that always beats you. I know. <laughs> but let's, let's, oh, yeah, we let's, always let's beat be them, so I, I really like them. <laughs> let's be real yeah. about this Scotland Australia game. This is, it's a close matchup because where Australia have been and Scotland having their sort of golden era where they're sort of fifth and sixth in the rankings. Um, and they're in their golden era of rugby. Um, but for me, Scotland are perennial bosses at, at Murrayfield. They don't beat any big teams at Murrayfield, other than maybe England sometimes. I, <laughs> I, you know, I, I mean, no, your point stands. Like, like, uh, your point stands then, right? Because even, England's not a real big team. Yeah, yeah. very, very creative. Uh, either team could win, <laughs> but I think, I think Australia. I'd love, I think Australia will win. I just see a Scotland last minute loss. And it's getting me quite excited. I can see it in my Jake, mind. Jake, you know, you know what what happens after after Australia beats Scotland. All of a sudden, we're talking about well, people talked about them losing every single game, and now possibly they could do the sweep. 
Imagine that. It's breaking for rugby. Imagine the confidence that they will have after those three to go to Ireland. If Ireland doesn't get a convincing victory over France, I, I, I'm putting a bag on on Australia to get it done then at Dublin. Well, like last time they did come to Ireland in 2022, it, it was only a three point game. Like, like the conditions were bad. It was it was probably one of the like scrappiest games of rugby I've ever watched. I was at the match and it was just pouring rain. And like I will be worried for that game. Like it like our like first team, like they haven't been I know we had a great performance in the first half against Argentina, but if we don't like I think Farrell might go for a very like strong lineup against Fiji so we can get build for that game and we won't be making as many mistakes and yeah i'll be worried for that i think it'll be a very tight game mm. yeah okay well we'll talk about that in the in the preview for for the next one that's just a little food for thought anyway that brings us to the end of it everyone thank you for listening uh, please do remember to go and follow rose on on tiktok go follow jake on his tiktok and his youtube and then also jimmy Go follow Jimmy on, on TikTok. He's also the, the runner of uh, Behind the Rock on TikTok and YouTube as the well. Rock Report podcast. Uh, yeah, sorry. What did I say? Sorry, I'm sorry. You said Behind the Rock. Oh, no, that's the South African competitors. Whoopsie. Um, <laughs> free, free, prom free promotion. Uh, Jake's, Jake's also part of um, the Rock, Rock Report. Report. Yeah, almost said it again. Anyway. Everyone, thank you for your love and support. We do appreciate you guys, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.